The Lord be with you. Welcome this afternoon to Shalote Presbyterian Church. I, am, I welcome you. My name is Laura Vio, and I welcome you on behalf of that congregation and the family of Anne Long. We are gathered here today because Anne believed this. In life and in death, we belong to God. As children of God and followers of Jesus, we also belong to each other. So it's right that in these moments when life intersects with death and when we feel most keenly the fragility of our own bodies that we gather together, we come to remember that we are not alone in this world. We come to be near to God. We come to remember that our dear sister in Christ, who was also a wife, a mother, a grandmother, a cousin, an aunt, a great-grandmother, a friend, and so, so much more to so many people, we come to remember Anne. And even as we remember who Anne was in this earthly realm, we rejoice in the reality of where she is now, right now. We come together, and with the help of technology, not just in this space, but virtually, <laughs> we come together to gather our hearts to support this beautiful family, to love one another in these hardest days, and to bear witness to the promise of the resurrection. We come in the end to worship the one to whom we belong in life and to whom we belong in death. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. In her baptism, Anne was clothed with Christ. And in the days of Christ's coming, she shall be clothed with glory. Let us pray. Eternal God, Maker of heaven and earth, you formed us from the dust of the earth, and by your breath you gave us life. We glorify you. Jesus Christ, the resurrection and the life, you tasted death for all humanity, and by raising, rising from the grave, you opened the way to eternal life. We praise you. Holy Spirit, author and giver of life, you are the comforter of all who sorrow our sure confidence and everlasting hope. We worship you. We know, O oh God, that your love for us is everlasting and that you alone can turn the shadow of death into the brightness of morning light. Help us to turn to you with believing hearts. In the stillness of this hour, speak to us of eternal things so that hearing the promises in scripture, we might have hope and be lifted above our distress into the peace of your presence. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I have a couple of readings from scripture that I'd like to share with you this afternoon. The first comes from Psalm 139. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up, you discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down, and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O oh Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in, behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit, or where could I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in shale, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and settle at the farthest limits of the sea, even there, your hand, your hand shall hold me fast. And if I say, surely the darkness will cover me and the light around me become night, even darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day, for darkness is as light for you. For it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works, that I know very well. 
My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my unformed substance. In your book were written all the days that were formed for me when none of them yet existed. How weighty to me are your thoughts, O God. How vast is the sum of them. I try to count them, (laughs) and they are more than the sand. I come to the end, and still I am with you. I also wanted to share with you, well, actually, I'll save Matthew 11, but I want us to read together Psalm 23. Because that is the psalm that Anne would have us read. So would you read, I've got the um, King James Version, because that's the one that we're most familiar with. So we'll read that together. You'll find it in your bulletin. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. As we prepare to sing together, this is the only time that I would ask people um, who are vaccinated even to go ahead and mask as we sing congregationally, if you'd like to. here for worship before the pandemic hit. And she came to me after worship and asked me to pray for her. And I didn't know much of her story. She didn't have a whole lot of time to tell me. And I don't even remember who introduced us. It might have been 
Laura Morrison or Liz or Carol Kaufman, I'm not sure, but whoever it was, it struck me that without knowing me, Anne came and asked for help. Now, why is this memorable? Well, it takes a certain kind of faith to overcome our natural tendency to sit back and wait and watch before we trust someone with the things that make us vulnerable, with the things that are scary and hard. The world teaches us to carry that stuff quietly, stoically, and we're somehow supposed to pull ourselves up, dust ourselves off, and just soldier on. But that's not what Jesus said. And that's not what Jesus modeled. Matthew captured that image that Jesus taught about the yoke. Come to me, you weary ones, you who are carrying so much, so many responsibilities, so much pain, so much hope, so many fears. Come to me, you who are carrying all the expectations that others place on you. Come to me, and I will give you rest. You don't have to be perfect, Jesus says. My grace will cover you. You don't have to carry those sorrows, Jesus says. I will take them. You know what? Even if your faith wanes for a time, if, if you run shy of faith, I've got more than enough for you, Jesus says. Come over beside me. We'll walk this life together. And my yoke, my way of moving through the world, it will allow you to breathe. So this faithful, faith-filled woman walked up to me and said, I'd like for you to pray for me. And I did. And not for the last time. <laughs> I prayed with her over the phone a couple, three times. I prayed with her on her porch where she shared a little bit more of her story and a little bit more about this great big family that she loves so much. Where she shared a little bit more about the burdens that she carried. And as things got a little less pandemic-y over these last couple, three months, I saw Anne at worship and at PW meetings and back in the hospital. But no matter whether it was a good day or a hard day for her, she would always ask, how are things at the church? And if she didn't hear about the people who were specifically on her heart that day, she would get specific in her hospital bed. She would ask me about someone else that she knew was hurting. That was Anne. One of the key ideas that we're holding on to as we study Ephesians this summer is walking worthy of the calling to which we've been called. That each of us in this great big body of Christ have been created and we've been given the gifts we need to do work that God set aside for us from the very beginning. When we were knit together, as the psalmist wrote, God was there. And when we're growing up and learning, God is there. And when we find that work that feels so very right in our core, God is there. When Anne found her work as a caregiver, buddy, was God there. So rich, so, so thick. When we wander away, if we find ourselves in our own personal shale or when our bodies begin to fail and life becomes painful, God's there too. Anne's faith in God's presence allowed her to walk into rooms where other people were hurting and care for them. And at the very end, Anne's faith created the space that we needed she held space for those who loved her to offer back some of that love and care to her to help ease Anne's pain. I suspect if we talked long enough, I would hear a story or two that would prove that Anne wasn't perfect all the time. <laughs> After all, anybody who was strong enough to make it through as many health challenges as Anne did is more than a little bit stubborn too. <laughs> but the stubborn love that she offered to her family to her friends, to her neighbors, was equaled by her stubborn love for God. She believed that the Good Shepherd was there to walk with her every time she found a shadow-filled valley. 
and when those shadows were especially dark this week. She believed that on the other side of that valley, the Lord would guide her to still waters that would quench her thirst and green pastures that would allow her to truly and safely rest. She believed that goodness and mercy would attend her always. Remembering those things together, she was able to move from sad and scared to sad and sure, sure of where she was going, sure of who would welcome her. She was sad to leave you, but she knew she knew that each day here was a blessing and that dying at this time was also a win because she was going home. As she came to the end of the days the Lord had counted for her in that book, she was still with God and God was indeed with her. And she believed that for you too, by the way, in case you did not hear it from her often enough or loudly enough to let it sink in. God loves you so much and God is with you every, every, every step of the way. And so I give thanks that I got to know your mom, your sister, your grandmother, your great-grandmother, your cousin, your aunt, your friend, even the little bit that I knew her because my faith is all the richer for it. Would you sing with us Amazing Grace? Grace has indeed led Anne home, and we live into our goodbyes today by commending Anne to God, praying you are immortal, the creator and maker of all. We are mortal, formed of the earth, and to earth we shall return. This you ordained when you created us, saying you are dust, and to dust you shall return. All of us go down to the dust, yet even at the grave we make our song, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant with all your saints, where there is neither pain, nor sorrow, nor sighing, but life everlasting. Amen. Let's continue to lift our hearts in prayer together. O oh God, before whom generations rise and pass away, we praise you for all your servants who, having lived this life in faith, now live eternally with you. Especially we thank you for your servant Anne, whose baptism is now complete in death. 
We praise you for the gift of her life, for all in her that was good and kind and faithful, for the grace you gave her that kindled in her the love of your dear name and enabled her to serve you faithfully. We give thanks for the many ways that she offered that same grace and love to all who came to know her. We give thanks for her incredibly generous spirit, the compassionate care that she lavished on everyone she knew. Your love flowed through Anne in the many, many ways she related to people as a child, a sibling, a wife, a parent, a grandmother, great-grandmother, in-law, cousin, aunt. Thanks to you, Anne's capacity for love went well beyond her household. You enabled her to offer care and compassion as a caregiver and nurse, as a friend and confidant for those she'd known forever and those she'd only known a little while. While it would have been wonderful to share another day or year or longer, we give thanks that for Anne, death is past and pain is ended and that she has now entered the joy that you have prepared. All of this is made possible through Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. It is always a dance at these things. There's this tension between just how sad we feel and just how true it is that this is good, that Anne is where she needs to be. And I think this song kind of captures that, doesn't it? Yeah, as we were talking, and what, what songs make you think of your mom? I'll fly away. Yeah, some glad morning when this life is over, I'm out of here. And she is at home on God's celestial shore. So let's stand as we sing this final song together.
as we leave this space. We'll, we'll move over to the fellowship hall so you'll have an opportunity to greet the family. But as we leave this space, there's this leaving behind of something, right? And entering into a new something. That is life. And remember, wherever we go, God's spirit is there. God's spirit is here with us as we have gathered. God's spirit goes with us as we scatter, loving, watching over, caring deeply, and guiding us. May the peace of Christ fill you this day. May the love of Christ embolden you this day. And may the spirit of God enfold you this day and the next and all the ones to come. Amen. Why don't you join me?